Newton's second law is as simple as this here. F equals ma. Force is mass times acceleration. Force in newtons, mass in kilograms, and acceleration in meters per second squared. Now there is a bit of a caveat with this one. Uh, we really should put in here as well if mass is constant. Because a more general way of saying this is uh, if a force ex is exerted on an object, uh, a resultant force that is, then its momentum changes and momentum is made up of mass and velocity. But if mass is constant, then it's just velocity that changes. That means that we have an acceleration. This applies to GCSE and A-level, but uh, we're going to start off with the easy GCSE part. By the way, if you haven't seen my easy vectors trick video, please go away and watch that first because life is too short to draw millions of triangles for trigonometry. And also, uh, it's worth having a look at my Force and the Furious video that we made with some of my pupils in Science Club a couple of years ago, which is a bit of fun. And you can hear my amazing Vin Diesel and Paul Walker impressions. Anyway, moving on. If you have a car, and uh, I'm going to try and draw good cars, because one guy was telling me that on another video that my cars are terrible and his teacher draws 3D cars compared to mine. I did cry myself to sleep. And this car has a mass of 500 kilograms. I don't know, maybe it's a smart car or something like that. And its engine pushes forward with a force of 2,000 newtons. So what do we have? We have F equals 2,000 newtons. We have mass is 500 kilograms. We want to find out acceleration. How do we do that? Rearrange it. You should be able to rearrange this without a triangle, hopefully. You should end up with acceleration is force divided by mass or force over mass. So that's 2000 divided by 500 equals four meters per second squared. GCSE people, you can write it like this. You should be writing it like that. That's the air level way. That's the GCSE way of writing meters per second squared. So that's nice and easy. Of course, if there was a drag force pulling in the opposite direction, so still pushing with 2,000 newtons, but the problem is, is that we have a drag force. Frictional forces, could be air resistance, could be friction, don't know, still 500 kilograms. Then, of course, that our resultant force is not going to be 2,000 newtons anymore, it's going to be 1,000 newtons because 2,000, take away 1,000 newtons of drag force, gives us a resultant force of 1,000 newtons. Divide that by 500 again, and that gives us a slower acceleration of two meters per second squared. Oh, we can write it like that. So let's talk about terminal velocity really quickly. Terminal means basically final. So we're talking about something's final velocity. Now this works for uh, a skydiver in particular, but it also works for uh, anything really that has that experiences drag forces. So it could be a car as well. But let's talk about a skydiver. Now when a skydiver jumps out of a plane, there they are, they start falling. And we have the weight pulling downwards but there's no other force acting on them. So they start accelerating downwards. Big tick. But as they start falling more and more, she looks very happy. The weight always stays the same, it's constant. But as Skydiver falls, she starts to experience a bit of air resistance but the weight is still bigger than the air resistance, so it accelerates, big tick. Eventually though, the air resistance, as she gets faster and faster, they will actually equal. So we say they're balanced. That's when we wander from Newton's second law territory into Newton's first law territory. Now we have no resultant force. There's no net force. The air resistance is as big as the weight in the opposite direction. So therefore, accelerates. Big fat no. 
that does not mean that she stops. That just means that the speed that she was going, the velocity she was going, at the point where this happens, that's the velocity that she keeps on going with. So she reaches terminal velocity. Of course, it's one last bit as well. When she opens her parachute, weight is still the same, but air resistance is now massive. So if air resistance is bigger than the weight pulling downwards, she's actually going to decelerate. That means she's gonna slow down. Is she gonna carry on slowing down? No, because eventually the air resistance will decrease to the point where it's the same as the weight again, and no surprises, she falls at a new terminal velocity. It's gonna be slower than the terminal velocity that she had here, but it's still a constant velocity. Let's go with inclined plane. And uh, let's say that we have a ball on here and it's free to roll down the hill. Now we know that its weight is pulling downwards. And if you haven't seen my easy vectors trick video, go and see that because this explains where I get these from. And we know that the ball isn't going to accelerate uh, into the ramp. It's not going to accelerate this way. It's only going to accelerate this way. And if this angle here is well, this angle here is theta, this angle here is also theta. Turning through the angle, this is going to be mg cos theta. This is going to be mg sine theta. So I cannot say that f equals mg because, well, the force is mg, but the acceleration isn't going to be g because it's not accelerating this way. But I can say the accelerating force which is what MA always is, is gonna be equals to MG sine theta. Now you may notice that the acceleration therefore is going to be G sine theta. F equals MG sine theta, F equals MA. So that means the acceleration is gonna be G sine theta. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because if the ball is allowed to fall under gravity, the acceleration is going to be G. But because it's only having some of that acceleration, as it's accelerating down the slope, then it's gonna be G sine theta worth of that 9.8 meters per second squared. We can have frictional forces pulling in the opposite direction though. It's called a FR. If the ball was moving at a constant speed, so I could say that FR equals mg sine theta, plus only if no acceleration. Notice that I didn't say if it's not moving. It is gonna be true if it's not moving, but it also could be falling at a constant speed. If that is the case, the frictional forces are gonna be equals to mg sine theta. There's one more thing I know about this situation, and that is this. So this is also going to be mg cos theta going perpendicular to the plane out of the ramp. Why? Because the ball isn't accelerating into the ramp. It's not accelerating out of the ramp, so I know though that's going to be true. This here is not always going to be true. This here is going to be always true, unless the ramp is broken. So that means it's falling into the plane, falling into the ramp, or it's magically sort of flying outwards like that, but that's not going to happen. So that's always going to be true. So let's have a think about a pulley system. One of these has a mass of 10 kilograms and the other one has a mass of six kilograms. So that means that we have two forces, 10 G. And this is going to be six G. Those are their weights. What's gonna happen if I let these two masses go? Well, obviously this one's gonna go down, this one's gonna go up because this 10 kilograms is heavier than this six kilograms. But what is the accelerating force that actually causes the acceleration? So accelerating force, we have 10 G pulling that way, 6 G pulling that way. So it's going to be F equals, the, the accelerating force is going to be 10 G 
take away 6G. So it's going to be four lots of G, so four times 9.8. That's my accelerating force. I also know that's equals to MA. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's my accelerating force, not the acceleration. So that's my accelerating force. This 4G is accelerating not just the 10 kilograms, but it's also accelerating the six kilograms as well. So I have to say that this is the total mass being accelerated. Therefore, cancelling everything down, I have 4G equals 16. Lots of A. I find that we have an acceleration of a quarter G or G over four, which is going to be equals to 2.45 meters per second squared. All that I did was figure out what the accelerating force is going to be, then apply that to F equals MA, but use the total mass being accelerated, then everything falls out in the wash.